Okay, so um, can you guys all hear me in the back there? Hopefully, yeah. Um, so we do a lot of custom theme development. That's mostly what we do at Pixajar. Um, you know, and and one of the issues that that we run into all the time is like, you know, we want this bit of functionality, that bit of functionality, but for us as developers, it's it's really hard if you know you're constantly picking a different starting point. So the goal behind you know um, parent and child themes and theme frameworks is just to make the developers um, make it easier for developers to uh, you know just just get started quicker. Um, so uh, parent and child themes uh, is is sort of one of the two best practices, right? Um, it 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 will help you to, um, to uh, maintain your themes. If, if you're updating the, the parent theme, you can, um, it, it will protect it from updates uh, so that um, you, know, you, can, you can continue upgrading. It's always good to upgrade. There's, there's you know, security considerations and, and new things that are happening in WordPress all the time. So uh, themes can be affected by that. Um, basically, any, any theme that, that's out there, whether you find on the, the WordPress um, theme repository or anywhere else, you know, any, any theme you buy, anything you create is, is a parent theme. Um, you can create child themes from it, and um, you really don't have to do anything, or the developer doesn't have to do anything to make it, make it a, a parent theme. Um, for child themes, it's a much smaller theme, right? It, it means you have to create less code every time. Um, and, uh, and, and there's only one requirement is you have to have a style.css. The, the smallest theme, uh, child theme you can have is just a set of CSS modifications. Um, how many of you guys are actually theme developers here? Um, but people just kind of playing around hacking your own theme? Okay, all right, that, that's good, actually good. This is, um, if you if you if you're not using child themes for hacking around with your your theme, you should be. Uh, it will protect your changes um, overall. But this is the only line that you have to set um, for uh, for your for your child theme to be uh, to to pull in all the the main template files. Basically, a parent theme is is you know it, it contains the full full set of pages and, and styles and. Uh, everything that you could possibly you could possibly need for a WordPress theme, and a child theme is is just a subset of those of those pages. It's just the things literally that you want to change about the parent theme. Um, when you when you insert this line into your style.css file, this is the header for your style.css file. Um, when you insert it in there, WordPress knows to go and look for that um, this folder and pull all of your your template files from that that folder, right? So the, the folders sit um, side by side in your themes directory. Um, this is a this is a good example of uh, of how to uh, you know how we can illustrate the, the the parent and child theme concept. So here we've got naked Elvis, right? Um, and uh, you know say say this is a great parent theme, right? It's a default sort of vanilla theme, but uh, you know Elvis went through many stages in his life. So we want to make sure that our, our child themes can, can sort of follow along with that. So we've got Army Elvis. Or, um, and so we've got the different bits of, of things that we want to customize for, for Elvis at that point in time. Right? Um, this is, this, these are, you can think of the clothes as, as sort of um, you know, different CSS styles and things like that. And maybe the, the pills are. Um, a slightly different layout or something. Um, you have the rock and roll Elvis. Um, you've got, again, different styles, but maybe he wants to have his gigs online or something, so you can, you can uh, build a special template for those. <clears throat> and then you've got the, the Vegas Elvis face. Um, and so you want to put on the rock star look and all that stuff. So, so here's the main theme again. Maybe the structure change in this one. You know, that you wanted to have two columns instead of just one. Um, but all of all of these on the side can be applied to this main theme, right? Um, this main parent theme. So, uh, so, so the goal is to protect all those um, protect all those changes from when you update this main theme here, the parent theme. Um, 
it's 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 a really it's a really good good uh, methodology because again you don't have to you don't have to recreate the wheel every time um, every time you want to create a theme um, you can you can pull a theme say you 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 bought a theme from you know Woo Themes or Theme Foundry or whatever um, if you if you found a, a theme that you like but you know it's just not quite right you know say you want to have a, a slightly different template um, you don't have to build the entire thing. You can you can buy that. You can start from where they where where they built, and you can customize just the one thing you want, whether it's um, colors or fonts or um, you know just a, a template. You can replace a, an individual template if you want to. Um, so again, change only what you need, um, and that protects you from those updates. Um, what you want to do in order to uh, the when, when WordPress um, pulls in your child theme, say you've activated a child theme, all it knows is what's in that folder. Um, it doesn't pull in any style sheets for you or anything like that, um, unless, unless um, you know, they're specifically put in the, in the header of, of that parent theme. So what you want to do is you want to um, import the, the parent's style so you get to the baseline of where it was. Um, and, and so we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Um, you uh, you can change specific templates, and um, another concept is that there's there's this um, functions.php file which you can add any sort of functionality within your WordPress theme. It's it's kind of like um, like a way for you to build plugins right within your theme, a WordPress plugin. So if you have a bit of functionality, say you know for um, John always does a talk on uh, how to how to create your plugins uh, or how to create your first plugin. Um, you could really do a lot of what he talks about within your functions.php file. If it's just something you don't want to distribute, it's just something that you need for your site. Um, so you could create like an author box shortcode or something within your functions.php file and use that. Um, but the thing to remember is you're, if, if the parent theme has a functions.php file, you're not going to be overwriting anything in there. It's, it's you know, sort of appending it to what, what functionality is already there. Um, so this is, this is the basic structure of a parent theme on this side and a child theme on that side. So these are, these are both um, for, I think this is for Traction or something um, for, from Theme Foundry. But basically, they have a, a base theme, which is a free theme that's out there. And they have a pro version that's a child theme of their base theme. Um, so they've, they've taken here and they've added some new, new files, but they've also um, if you look over here, there's a header in both places. There's a header.php and a header.php. So in that instance, this header is no longer going to be relevant to WordPress. It's going to pull in the information over there. So this, this is what I was talking about. You can change um, a specific template based on what you want. So I know in particular in this theme, the pro version allows you to upload a logo in the back end um, and use it instead of you know, the, the name of your WordPress site. So that's the difference between this header. This header only uses text, and that one allows for an image upload. Right? So, so just placing it in your child theme folder is going to overwrite this file. So the, the hierarchy of how WordPress looks is it looks here first. Uh, if it doesn't exist, it pulls back into here. Right? Um, and then again, the functions.php is in both places, but it doesn't get replaced. It gets added to. That's, that's important. Um, so the other, the other um, best practice, which is, is really more for developers, um, is, is theme frameworks. And these are things like um, hybrid is one, uh, thematic is one, uh, Woo framework is one, and uh, I think Genesis is a really popular one, actually, from Studio Press. Um, so, but it's, it's really for developers. I, I mean, it's not, it's not if you want to go and um, style your theme, you don't want to start from this because it, it, it looks really vanilla, right? It's just white with maybe some boxes um, around things. But if, if you're looking for, you know, just to customize a theme that you like that's out there, you want to go with the parent-child thing um, and modify it that way. Um, it uses some advanced WordPress concepts, um, actions and filters, right? So if, if, you're, if you're actually a theme developer or a plugin developer, Actions and filters allow you to hook into WordPress, um, or in this case, your theme framework, and add code where that didn't um, previously exist. 
Um, and filters allow you to modify the output of what WordPress gives you. So um, in your theme, uh, it uses, uh, when you output you know, your actual post data, um, you use the, the function, the content, the template tag, the content. Um, but you can actually filter that and change it completely before it comes out in your theme or in a plugin or whatever, all, all sorts of um, um, entry points to, to change that stuff. Um, so, so these two are um, really what, sorry, um, really, shoot, sorry, um, really what uh, give WordPress the, the power, you know, to, to make it as flexible as possible. Um, for for all of our needs, I mean, no no two blogs are exactly alike, right? Um, so just as an example, we've got um, this is what the uh, the actions look like in in thematic, for example, which is what we use for almost every pro I'd say every project at this point. Um, you'll see this in inside their code: do action before thematic with some sort of variable. If you're not familiar with PHP, I don't. It's not really PHP; it's WordPress, but um, basically, what this is saying is, at a certain point in my execution, I want to do this. I want to do this action, okay? I want, and I'm going to call it this. This is my title for it, and then I'm going to pass it this argument. So this is, you know, uh, a bit of data that that you know maybe you need to act on or whatever. Um, and and so what that's saying is, it's telling WordPress, you know, let's look around for for things that are hooking into this before thematic uh, action. Right, and um, the way you would hook into it would be here. You're going to add an action to this tag right here, and here's the function name that you're going to you're going to do something with, right? Which is also here. Um, this this is all going to be done within your your functions.php file, um, and and specifically, this is going to be important if you're using theme frameworks. Regular themes don't really ever um, incorporate these type of things. Um, it gives you a, actually um, two other uh, uh, two other bits of um, bits of data you can put in there. You can give it a priority. So say you want to filter into something two or three times, which is possible because you never know a, a, a plugin might be filtering your content, um, or a, you know a, another theme option or something maybe hooking into the same the same tag. So you can give it a priority. So you can order how things happen. Right? You can add a bold tag here, and you can do something else here. Um, and then um, there's both the last two are optional, which is why I didn't put them. But arguments is actually it's, it was a little confusing for me when I first saw it. It's not you're not passing this variable, or if there's two or three or four, you're passing the number of, of variables that are going to be going into it. So um, it, it, it really retains the flexibility that um, you know to make this this as powerful as possible. You can pass into this. 10 different variables that maybe you want to act on within this action. Um, and in here, you would put 10 instead of like all the different variable names, right? Um, so uh, within, within this function, you create this. This, this is where you get into the PHP um, business. Uh, you would create your function that, again, is tied to the same name here. And you're, you're capturing as, a, um, as an argument um, that so you can execute on it. Basically, you can use that data that WordPress provides. Um, are, there any, are there any questions on this part? Real quick. No. Okay. Awesome. Um, okay. So the the second bit of of the WordPress functionality is is filters. Um, they work essentially the same way, except for instead of just executing some code at, at, a, at a certain point in, your, in the, um, the presentation of your page, it's actually um, applying changes to a, a variable, right? So in, in the case of, like you said, the template tag of um, the content, you could, you could add a filter to that that, um, that would you know, add the author's name to the front of it or um, anything you want. But in this case, uh, you'll see something that looks like this. Um, echo, which just means print out, apply filters. Um, this is the filter name that you're giving it. And what you want to apply a filter to, like the variable, right? Um, so in here, uh, what it's going to do is going to return, it's going to just print out whatever the output of, of whatever's modified in there. 
Um, so here, again, instead of add action, we're adding a filter, right? We're, we're applying it to the same tag, and we're giving it a function name, which is here. Um, same priority, same arguments, works the same way. And whatever you return from this function, the difference is you, in the, in the previous version, you would echo in the actions. Uh, in, in WordPress actions, you echo something, you print it out, um, versus filters where you'd actually um, return some data back so that it can be printed out through, through that function there. Um, so within thematic specifically, uh, and this, this is the case for a lot of theme frameworks, um, they, they give you um, a theme options page. A lot of times if you've, if you've purchased a theme, you'll see you know, a bunch of different options that you can, you can modify the way your theme looks. Well, thematic actually gives you a, a framework to create your own theme pages. So if you were you know, building a site for a client, for example, and you know specifically that they're going to want to um, you know, have a gallery or something like that, uh, you can actually give them a, a page where they can actually edit that in the admin rather than having to you know, make some, some crazy uh, modifications to WordPress and um, build plugins and things like that. You can, you can build it as part of your theme. And they give you a framework to, to actually build that. Um, and, and the other thing too is, is that in theme frameworks, a lot of times you don't want to actually replace template files, right? Because they're, they're a lot more complicated. Um, I'll show you some in, a, in a just a second. Um, it's, not, it's not your standard you know, loop. It, it's, it's a bunch of different things. So what you're going to do instead of modifying through, a chain, like just dropping in a new template file is you're going to be replacing content with, um, with filters, and you're going to be adding new content with, uh, with actions. So why do we choose thematic? Um, it's, it's, supported, uh, it's supported by a, a pretty big community of people. I actually just went under a, a, a new version. Um, Ian Stewart uh, is, is part of the, uh, the theme team at, at, at Automatic. Um, it's a really solid... Uh, SEO-based platform, you know, it's, um, it, it's really well thought out as far, in that perspective. Um, and Chris Ghostman also is, um, you know, he's taken over the project since, um, mostly, I, I would say, from, uh, from Ian, since Ian's working now at Automatic. Um, and so it's, it's sort of one of those things, just like WordPress was, uh, has evolved since, since uh, B2, um, Thematic is also evolving after after the original founder um, stopped working on it. Um, it's got a bunch of things that, are, that, that, make, uh, that make themes really powerful. Widget areas, it's got 13 of them. Um, and they're sprinkled all throughout the layout. So if you want to add something on, say, your, your post listing page, you can, you can actually add a widget in between one of the posts. That's one of the widget areas. Um, and the footer and the sidebar and the header, like there's a bunch of stuff. Um, Last time I checked, there was 85 different actions, places where you can add content without having to modify a single template, um, and 71 ways to actually change the, con the output of, of the theme, right? So um, that's, that's a lot. I mean, we don't, we don't use half of those, um, but we, I think we created some pretty, pretty neat stuff. Um, by default, it, it, it's really planned, right? Like, the, you wouldn't look at this and go, oh, I want to buy that, right? And it's not, it's not something that, that is, is like that. But we take something that looks like this to start with. Again, this is for developers to really start with. And we created something that's like this, right? Which looks pretty different. I mean, it's got a lot of functionality. We, we didn't really create any special templates for this. It's all done through actions and filters of, of content, right? So. Same framework here was used here, right? You can create completely different looks um, just based on um, adding, adding content, um, filtering the different content areas, things like that. Um, and it, you're not limited to standard WordPress views, right? You're not, you're not limited to a single um, listing page, you know, a category page and um, a detail page. It's, it's not like that. There's, so much more flexibility with a, um, a theme framework. This is another example of, um, of a site that's, that's using thematic. Um, again, again, like, there's really no limitation to what you can, 
you can build with it. Um, the same, same again. It's it's the same same framework, different different look. Um, here's here's some additional resources. Um, I'll post my slides too, so that you guys can, you don't have to like jot this down real quick. But um, Theme Shaper is the original um, developer. That's that's Ian's um, site where there's a complete thematic guide, right, of how to customize it and things like that. Some of the document, uh, documentation's a little sparse, so if you're actually a developer, I would suggest, um, you know, going into, uh, going into the code and just, just scanning down a template file and you can see what, what the order of things is. Um, thematic for you is, is Chris's site. Um, it's sort of, he, he's posting a lot of stuff on how to customize it these days. Um, and, and it's really the place that, that you know, if you're looking for kind of some things you can do with it. I think the new version um, does integrate WordPress menus, the new, the new 3.0 feature, but the old version of Thematic didn't, so he, he was posting ways to get that incorporated into, the, into there. Um, that's us, obviously. Drop us a line if you have any questions, we can help you out. Um, there's a Google Code project for it, and these last two links are just some things that I found that um, the cheat sheet had, had a really good structural uh, representation of thematic, and um, it, uh, it, it made it a lot clearer visually if you're a visual type of person. And um, the op 111, uh, it just had a bunch of other kind of code snippets and things that, that I found that were kind of useful. So, any questions at this point? Yes. Uh, basically, there's um, there's actually um, a bit of talk these days about um, putting child themes on the theme repository of, of WordPress.org. Um, I don't think it's come to any consensus, but thematic is on um, on the WordPress um, repository. So theoretically, you know that could be a distribution point. Um, it's I wouldn't say that you would dis distribute thematic with a child theme like that. But it would, it would definitely be a requirement, right? Um, we don't actually sell themes per se. I mean, we're theme develop like we do. It's like a service business, so um, clients come to us to ask us to build them something custom. Um, but I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there's you know a marketplace out there where you can you can sell child themes like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm wondering if I, all I want to do is change the styles, and I'm not really looking to change or get into the functionality at all. Yeah. Um, but I really don't want to build on the base style sheet. I just want to scrap it and do my own. Yeah. What would be the better option there? There's, um, there's, there's a couple of really vanilla themes. Like I think there's like WP Sandbox or something like that, and blank canvas. Blank canvas. Yeah, that's another one. Um, there's a bunch of really, I mean, they look a lot like um, thematic, just just really sparse. The, you don't you don't have to import the styles of, of thematic, and, and I can actually show you that. But um, I, I mean, if you're not looking to really add the functionality, um, I would say just just pick a theme and just make a child theme of it, and don't worry about um, you know necessarily a, a framework per se. Um, you know, and if if it's something like I know I've heard I've heard people say. That they'll just take a, a theme, like strip it out, and that becomes their starting point that they use, um, and then they know all the structure of, of you know the HTML elements, so it's easier for them to style. But still incorporating that child theme concept, where that becomes your base your base theme, and then having a child theme that builds upon that is is a good way. If you know, if say like you know six months down the road, you go, oh, I really want to add you know a new sidebar or something like that to your base theme. You don't have to you know, merge in all of your, your style sheet changes. Um, you know, you can just add that to the parent theme and it will apply to every child theme you've created, right? Using that theme frame, that theme as a parent theme. Does that make sense? Anything else? Yes? I have a quick question about sure. 
So if in your themes folder in WordPress, mm -hmm. you would have your parent theme and then your child theme as well. Yeah. And when you go to select the theme, you're just selecting the, the child theme. And then That's correct. And pulls in using that template traction, all the styles, all the information from the parent theme. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, they sit, the, the theme folders actually sit side by side, parent and child theme. Um, and uh, when you're looking at it in the admin, which I'll show you in a second, um, you'll see the, the parent theme and then you'll see a child theme. Um, you can give the child theme a separate sc screenshot to kind of um, differentiate it between everything else. Um, and, and all you have to do is activate that child theme and all the functionality of that parent theme get pulled in. Anything else? Yes. Uh, how would I, I have a theme I already like. Yeah. How would I implement it on top of thematic framework? What's usually the workflow for that? That's a good question. Um, I mean, thematic has a pretty standard format. You know, like it's got, it's got your basic listing page. It's got a page template. It's got a category template. It's got, you know, a post detail. So it, it for, most, for most cases, if it's, if it's just style sheet kind of stuff, you can probably integrate it that way. It's just, there's probably a difference between your naming conventions. That's going to be the biggest struggle, right? Is um, you know merging whatever you called your your blocks of content with with what thematic calls it. Um, but I mean, it's definitely doable. You know, I mean, uh, if if you have a theme functions page, you know, or whatever you have functionality within your theme, you could you could probably copy that into the child theme folder um, and. That, that content would be live in your child theme versus the parent theme. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, really, I, I think the reason we use thematic is, is because it really takes the development part out of, out of making a theme. And it's, it's almost like you're just styling, you know, styling HTML at that point. Um, so, so that's kind of cool. Um, and, and where custom situations need to be put into play, you know, you need another column, then you just hook into um, thematic and add it, and it's not. Yeah, that's it. Anything else? Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, I know, like one of the benefits of using a framework like Thematic is, you know, so you can update the, the base framework and mm -hmm. it carries over to the, the child themes. But I've kind of found that on some sites, when I do that, like up, upgrade to the latest version, it breaks the current site. Yeah, I, I think that's that depends on um, who the developer is of that theme framework um, like like for example yeah so so with thematic they just went through an upgrade which we experienced the same thing where it broke some things but um, for good developers like Ian and Chris um, they actually put in backwards compatibility constants and things like that that you can set so that like one of the things that that they changed was uh, in the body class the the page ID changed or whatever like the format of of that um, the class so they've put in some constants that actually account for that. And if you want backwards compatibility, you just turn on the constant and it's, it's just like it was before. Um, but for, for all of the things that they have improved, um, you know, you, you get the benefit of all those things. So, I mean, it is, it is dependent. I mean, if you pick any theme off the theme repository that, you know, who knows who built it or whatever, um, you know, who knows if they're gonna upgrade or, or even if they're thinking about backwards compatibility. You know, I mean, that's definitely a big, a big, you know, consideration when you're, when you're choosing a framework. You know, how, you know, how concerned are they going to be with moving forward? Are they just putting this out there to, you know, just, just put it out there and then going to walk away from it? Or, you know, are they going to, are they just going to keep pushing forward and, you know, screw the requirements? Um, you know, that's a consideration to be made for sure. So, uh, I, I can show you some things like after. Um, that uh, the compatibility type stuff. So, um, anything else? Okay. Uh, this is me. Um, contact information's here. If if you guys ever have any questions about theme frameworks or whatever, just, you can give me a call or email me or whatever. Follow me on Twitter. Um, I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, okay. So. So um, I just wanted to go through quickly um, just some things you can do kind of with, with thematic. Maybe we can kind of like make this a little interactive. If you guys have some questions, we can um, 
we can put them in here. Um, so this is this is thematic by default. Like I said, it's not it's not terribly pretty, right? I've just got one post in here, so there's not a ton of stuff. But um, yeah, it's your basic homepage, right? It's your blog listing. You've got a sidebar here. Actually, this is two sidebar areas, um, and you know a footer that's that's replaceable in the admin. Um, you've got a page template, which again it looks it looks very bland, right? Um, so the way that um, I've, got, I've got it installed right now is I have, um, where is it? Thematic. Yeah, so thematic is, is installed and in, in active right here. Um, but I, I went ahead and created a, a child theme um, where, again, for, for the sake of um, the, dem the demo, here's the two. Uh, folders sitting side by side in my themes directory. Um, so uh, all we have to do to to make sure it pulls from thematic is um, this line right here. Um, so you again, you're going to use not not the name of of it. So it's not capitalized thematic. It's whatever the folder name is. Right, so if, you're, if your um, framework is called My Cool Framework with spaces, but the folder name is called My Dash Cool Dash Framework, um, you need to put that tag in there to make it to make WordPress understand the association. Um, to okay, um, in order to activate our theme, we've got this one right here, which is our um, it's our thematic. Uh, our thematic child theme. So it tells you right here, the files are located here, and it uses templates from thematic, right? So changes to the templates will affect both themes. Um, so that's, that's talking about that, that thematic um, parent theme. So if we activate it, and we go back, and I refresh, it's exactly the same, right? Nothing's changed. And the reason why that is, is because right here in the style sheet, I'm importing all of thematic styles, their default styles. So, so to your point about wanting a, a theme that has no um, has no sort of style at all, if I delete all those, WordPress just becomes, I mean, thematic just becomes a list, a bunch of HTML with no style applied to it, right? So. Um, uh, so you can you can take or leave whatever the the parent theme has already created, right? Um, in in this instance, you can you can add colors and styles, any sort of styles that you you would want to, and uh, as long as you add them below these these imported styles, they're going to overwrite what's in the those um, the previous styles. Um, but one thing I wanted to uh, show was well, this is this is the functions file, right? So you can actually completely change the way that WordPress works, or not WordPress, sorry, thematic works and displays. Um, and this is, this is basically where the power of, of a theme framework would come in. Um, so you can, you can use, um, basically these are the actions, right? So I'm adding an action to a WordPress function in it, right? And I'm, I'm saying, run this function, remove thematic actions, because I want to actually get rid of some of the functionality of thematic, because I don't want it. So within that function, I'm removing action. So the way that, the way that WordPress works is you have to do it within a specific order. Um, if, you don't, if you don't hook in early enough to, um, to where the theme framework is, um, it, nothing's going to happen. It's going to look like it's, it's not working. But um, just when you're, whenever you're removing something from thematic, just hook into a knit like this. And you can just call remove action. This is something I actually didn't talk about. But just like adding actions to something, you can remove an action that's already specified. Um, so within um, within thematic, there's this um, right here. This is thematic's version of what I what I wrote, right? So they're adding an action to this this hook, which is a little higher, but you can't see it. Um, they're calling this function to output the blog title. That's what this one's doing. So, uh, where it says just another WordPress multi-site site, that's the title of the site. Uh, sorry, WordCamp Las Vegas is the title of the site. Um, so, 
Uh, so yeah, so WordCamp Las Vegas is the title of this site. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm telling it to remove this action. The, I, want, I want to remove the blog title, essentially, from this. So as soon as I save this and I refresh, the blog title is gone. So without having to edit any templates or anything, it's just it, we've, we've taken it out. Right? But a lot of people, this, a, common, a common thing that people want to do is they want their logo in there, right? So I've created another action that's going to hook in the exact same place to this, to this thematic header. And I'm giving it a priority of three because if you see in, in here, um, here's thematic header. Uh, it's adding an action here to open some branding div. Right, and it's hooking into to, um, priority number one. Then it's hooking into priority number three here. Then five here. So it's it's creating this this flow right of the HTML that it's outputting um, through a set of a set of actions, right? And so we're modifying that by taking out step three, and we're going to replace our own step three. So when I replace this, oh boo, sorry. Was that? Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's what happens when I do it right ahead. Oh, my, my image is gone. OK. Um, so say that was a logo, right? You know, you could, you could make the, the logo there and then, and then use styles to um, actually apply some styles to, to the logo itself. So, you know, just with this, with that, with that, those few lines of code, you can you can replace a logo on the site without having to actually modify the the actual template, right? So here again, this is this is my folder structure. I've got the Fat Elvis folder, but all I have in it is styles and functions, right? And I've I've modified that template. Now, if it was a if it was a standard theme, what I could do is I could go in here and say, okay, here's the header file. So I'm going to copy that in to um, to Fat Elvis, and instead of instead of you know letting it do all this stuff, I'm going to say no. I want this to you know be red or something. Right. So I could do that, and and now it's going to overwrite. The original, the original header file with what I created, but that's not a very forwards compatible way to work with with a theme framework, right? Because maybe in the next version of thematic, they're going to change one tiny little thing about the header file, and now I'm out of sync with with the main theme framework. So, as much as you can avoid, um, you know, actually hacking through, um, you know, header files and um, any sort of uh, templates better because you don't have to worry about backwards compatibility. Again, it's it's all about you know staying keeping your your child theme um, as much separate as as much separated from from the parent theme as possible, um, so that you're protecting yourself from those future updates. Um, is there any questions on that? No, you guys got it. Awesome. Um, is there anything? That you maybe have a question about how you would you would put in there, and we can do some interactive examples. I have a question for you. I don't know if it's a little bit outside of what you want to talk about branding, but if you have a theme framework and you want to create a custom page template mm -hmm. just inside the child theme, mm -hmm. like for example, on that 360 site you did, you've got like a four-column layout you created. Mm -hmm. How do you go about doing that? Um, what we do, and maybe I can, I'll I'll pull up. Um, a theme that we actually created. Um, so this is um, not working. Uh, um, so what what we've been doing is um, it within the, the actual um, flow of, of a theme, uh, you, can, you can create different layouts by uh, projects. 
So here's, here's a, this is just a page, right, within, within the WordPress admin. Um, but none of this content comes from the WordPress admin except for this bit. This is the page title and this is the content. All the rest of this is added through a, through a filter. And what, what I'm doing is, I'll pull this page up. Um, we're creating uh, ladies. So we have a set of, a series of functions, a lot of functions actually, um, that, that hook into um, the content of the page, which is, which is this here. And it's, it's tying in, it's, it's hooking in and, and replacing the content right there, right? So if I go to, um, and, and what we're, we're doing in different instances. So if we're checking here, if, if it's the ladies page, which this page is ladies, um, and then, or if it's a single lady, that's kind of funny. Um, or, and then down here, I'm, um, these are things that are going to apply to everything within the ladies section, right? And then this one is only going to apply to the main ladies page. And then this is only going to apply to all the single ladies. <laughs> um, so, uh, so for, in that instance, this, we want to look at this, right? Um, the, the ladies page. We're hooking into um, a custom filter that we set up, which is the content. Um, and we're, we're replacing, we're filtering it through this, this function here, KKI ladies content. Um, ladies content. So here, we're setting up, basically we're taking in this, the content, whatever the content was passed to this function. Um, and we're doing all these, all these things which are, you know, showing, showing the alphabet list. There's, um, here's the part where it's showing the title and the content. Uh, we're using that content variable right there. Um, and then we're pulling in some, some random single ladies to, um, to display down here at the bottom right. Um, and those are, those are like custom post types. So uh, we're, we're pulling in a custom query there. Um, and then like it's, it's got some JavaScript here. So if I, if I um, search, you know, like this is all, again, all pulled in through this, this modification of what the content is. Um, so, so that, that's all possible within filtering the content, right? So all we're doing is, if this is just a regular page, you know, just this and this are going to show up. But uh, actually, let me see if I can show that. So if I, so this is, this is what shows up if, if that function's not called, right? Um, if, if I'm not filtering the content at all, um, it's, when I put that back in, obviously all that, all that data comes back. Um, and then similarly, if you're going, say, to, uh, let me see if I find. So this is, this is a custom post type page um, that we're doing the same thing to, right? We're filtering, um, we're filtering to show basically a single, a single page, um, like a blog post page. Um, but we're formatting with, you know, this is like a, um, a post thumbnail and then the title and some content. We've got some custom meta areas over here, um, a more uh, custom, we have a custom sidebar that's over here. So what's the template look like for that page? For, oh. Um, so within Okay, sorry, thanks dude. Huh? Thank you. Um, we're just using the default thematic page template but or the single template. So but we're modifying it through filters. So we never touched any of this. This is all relies within or lies within thematic and all we're doing is is hooking into thematic to display all this different content. Does that make sense? Uh, they're about to give me the hook, so does anybody have any last quick questions? Okay. Is there a, a, a good place to learn about actions and filters? Yeah, the uh, WordPress Codex is a great place to learn about um, ac how to use actions and filters. Um, within the context of, of um, thematic, you can go to themeshaper.com slash thematic slash guide.
This is the one I, I, I it was in my link. But basically you can see, like here's, here's some, some hooks with some examples. And where, this is the one I was talking about. So thematic header, we replaced this one right here, which is set at position number three, right? Um, so these are like sub to, to the header one. They hook into the header, below header, blah, 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 blah. Some examples here, um, just kind of how to, how to do that. And again, how to remove thematic actions. Um, and then same thing with, uh, with filters here. This shows all the different um, things you can filter. It's actually not all, but it's most of the things you can filter. Um, and like most of the filter stuff is in the header, but um, I didn't really show it, but it, it comes with like a, a drop down menu, like jQuery drop down menu um, that you can filter and change the way it behaves. Um, here's all the content type things, like the page title, all that stuff. Um, but it's, it's really specific down to um, like the links. You can change like the, the, the text of like the edit page link or whatever. Um, so in the example of this, excuse me, um, I, have, I could have a link that says edit lady and it would take me back to the post, the post edit page for this lady. Um, so so I, would, I would say go to uh, codex. I think it's I think it's yeah the plugin API. Um, so basically, if you go to this this one, it, it describes a little more in detail what what hooks and actions and filters and stuff are. And then WordPress actually has this capability built into it. There's a lot of things in WordPress you can you can actually hook into. Um, so it, it it becomes more like plugin development at that point if you're modifying WordPress. But um, <coughs> it it kind of talks about some things you can do with that. So okay, I think that's it. That's all my time.